All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, so much for being here on behalf of, of Defined Learning. Uh, we'd like to thank you for your attendance and interest in today's session. Uh, my name is Andy Schaefer. I'm president of Defined, and I'm joined here today by my colleague and our global head of product development, Lisa Wolf. We're very excited to have you uh, with us today. So many representatives, uh, senior leaders, uh, superintendents, curriculum folks from all around the country and, and internationally as well. So we're very excited about our content to, to be shared today. And of course, what we're here to share today is a little bit more about defined goals. Uh, we're, we're very excited to share this, uh, the latest from Defined, which is a means to track the progress of you, towards your a district or state or otherwise a portrait of a graduate or por profile of a graduate. So we're excited to share that with you today. Um, we'll also be monitoring the chat uh, and Q&A, so we'll do our very best to go ahead and make sure that we answer uh, all of your questions as we go along today. Uh, before we get started uh, with the content, I wanted to share just a, briefly with everyone who may not be as familiar with Defined a little bit about our ecosystem. So we have a couple of different platforms that, that our partners use, um, starting with our flagship service, Defined Learning, uh, which is a collection of projects, deeper learning units uh, for all different subject areas, K through 12, aligned to state standards and used to support day-to-day -day instruction. We also have a platform uh, called Define Careers. And this is a, a, the platform is an opportunity for students to experience a variety of different careers, learn about those careers, um, enroll in different virtual internships, but it's an it's a opportunity for students to really K through 12, uh, explore different career opportunities and make informed decisions as they move towards graduation. Supporting our platforms is Defined Academy, which is a variety of different professional learning opportunities, virtual, uh, in-person, uh, we different different uh, opportunities, both uh, uh, in your district, uh, coming to Defined Academy as, as an actual location in Northbrook, Illinois as well. So those, those are a little bit about our services. And today we're going to get into a little bit more about Defined Goals, which is designed to work with our services to help you uh, track your progress towards your portrait of a graduate. So how do we get here? So we've been around, uh, you know, for more than ten years, and you know, really addressing the areas of, of problem solving and critical thinking. If you wouldn't mind uh, just backing up a slide uh, really quickly, uh, Lisa. Um, and we've developed a defined uh, portrait of a graduate. This is something that we've made available um, to our partners to utilize uh, our projects and measure these types of, of skills and competencies as they're working their way through. Um, and, and of course, this was, we along with the measurement tools, rubrics and things to measure uh, student progress in these, in these areas, this was all about the defined portrait graduate. It wasn't until last summer when we had the opportunity to, to interact with Dr. Mark Schaefer, uh, no relation by, by the way, at uh, Thompson School District, in Colorado. And at a conference, uh, Mark asked, we love what you're doing around your, your, your defined portrait of a graduate. Could you do something around our portrait of a graduate and take our unique characteristics and global competencies and build measurements and report on that? And of course, we've been hearing more and more, uh, of course, districts across the, the country, elsewhere, developing the portrait of a graduate and looking at different ways. How can we actually track this information? So we really embraced this and it really started upon us on this journey around defined goals. Uh, so thank you, uh, Thompson School District. Thank you, Dr. Mark Schaefer, um, for, for really this idea. We'll give credit where credit is due, but we're excited about the progress that we've made since that time and uh, to share defined goals with you today. So to get started, I'm going to bring in uh, our, our, our uh, global head of product, uh, Lisa Wolf, and ask our first check-in question. So Lisa, maybe tell us a little bit about what approach did you take to address the need of measuring progress towards a portrait of a graduate competencies in the K through 12 ecosystem? Well, thanks, Andy, and thanks for that, that nice kind of summary of what we do and our portrait of a graduate and kind of how we got here. Um, when we were hearing from Thompson and from you know all of our different partners who were really looking at wanting to measure 
um, those types of competencies. It really was a natural fit for us in both define learning and define careers uh, to measure those competencies, just like you shared, uh, because of the project-based learning component that we have. In addition to assessing state and other standard sets, and we're going to take a look at some of this coming up, um, we're also providing those career-connected learning opportunities across all the career clusters. What we really focus on and kind of our secret sauce is the project-based learning component that really lends itself nicely to be able to really capture and take a look at and help students develop all of those different skills and competencies that, that we saw in, in both Thompson's Portrait of a Graduate, what we have in our Portrait of a Graduate as well, is what many school districts across the country are trying to do. So in just a little bit, I'll give everybody a glimpse of what I mean by that project-based learning component that we have. Um, that's really going to be kind of what we do in order to really measure all of those different competencies. Th thanks for that. That uh, thanks for that great answer and that background, Lisa. So maybe talk a little bit about you know what are those key components that are going into this defining goals process that allow districts to measure their portrait or profile of a graduate. Absolutely. We really have four different components here that I am going to talk about when we talk about kind of the four key things, like like you already said, Andy, and just kind of to recap, our, our three key products really are defined learning, defined careers, and then defined academy. And defined goals is really just going to be a customized implementation of those either two or three different uh, products that we already offer. And we're going to take those products and do four different things with them. First, you may have a portrait or a profile of a graduate or some other custom plan. It goes by lots of different names. But whatever custom plan you have, whether it is that portrait or profile of a graduate, we can take a look at all those competencies you're trying to measure. And what we're going to do is we can, first of all, add it into our platform. I'm going to show you what that looks like so that students can be self-reflecting and educators can then be monitoring progress towards that plan, as well as providing evidence for all of those different competencies. The second part, like I mentioned, it really is just that custom implementation. We're going to create a custom catalog. We have thousands of projects across both Define Learning and Define Careers, all of which are going to really help you measure and really take a, a deeper dive and look into those different competencies. So we can take a look at all of those projects that we have pick specific ones across different grade levels, customize the rubrics that are within them to really make it a nice customized implementation and make it very easy uh, for your educators to be able to go in and know exactly what it is that they wanna be able to teach um, within their classes that's really gonna help your school or district meet their goals. Um, next kind of going around this wheel here is professional learning. Andy mentioned Defined Academy. We have a wonderful suite of different professional learning opportunities. And what we can do is customize those based on that custom catalog, all of those projects, all of those competencies that you are going to be doing within your school or district and, and really figure out what's going to be the best fit for your, your educators and your administrators and leadership across your district in order to make sure that you have a successful implementation um, and to make sure that it's used. And then finally, the very last thing there that we'll also talk about today is the reporting. You want to know how, how do I know that my students are growing with communication or critical thinking or any of those different competencies? And you're going to have the data with defined goals in order to take a look and measure the progress towards those goals. So that's kind of the four parts, being able to take a look at your custom plan, customizing a whole catalog of specific projects for you, a custom professional learning plan, and then, of course, all of the reporting that goes along with that. That, so with that, you. yeah, go ahead, Andy. Can we can we, can we jump in and take a look? <laughs> yes, let's go ahead and do that. I know some of you may be familiar with Defined and some of the services that we have to offer, but some of you may be hopping in and hearing us for the very first time. So I'm going to start by just going through and just in the interest of time, because I know we only have 30 minutes today, by only looking at Defined Learning, but know that Defined Careers also has a lot of the same things that I'm going to show you. So we're going to dig right in and I'm going to walk you through just Defined Learning and then kind of show you how this can be customized and take a look at this in, from the from the look at kind of a defined goals um, view. Now, when we take a look at this, and I'm logged in as an educator right now into defined learning, you're going to notice two different parts up here. We have our course library with all of our content areas. Down below, we're going to have all of our different courses. I'm going to show you what those mean in here in just a second. But we have nearly, I was just looking today because we just added a whole bunch of different content earlier this week because we're constantly updating all of our courses and projects. 
we're right now, this mina has 999 projects. I was like, oh my gosh, almost a thousand because I never know quite how many to say. This does have some of our custom ones for defined goals in here. So but it's still close to a thousand whole projects here. Um, you're able to search by standard and by keyword. I'm going to show you just by looking at this course catalog, how you can start searching for a project and what that looks like. I'm a former high school math teacher. So let's go ahead and look in math and see what this looks like here. When I click on math, you're going to see all of our math courses come up. These are all of our collections of projects and each one of these, what we would call a course, which is going to be a typical, um, you know, implementation or outline of different projects for that particular area. So if we go into grade six math, for example, you're going to see a unit outline over here, which kind of outlines a typical way that this a sixth grade math would be set up. You don't have to follow this at all. It's just really there to help you um, see and organize everything there. At the top for our educators, we're going to have a number of different resources, a course playbook, a task plan to kind of help teachers roll this out, as well as a student task plan as well to show all of those different areas. Now, within this unit outline, you can go through, see within each unit, you're going to see there's probably three or four different projects all aligned to that particular content area and that particular typically would be almost a chapter in a textbook. So let's dig in. I'm going to look at data and statistics and look at an actual project here to give you a quick view of that. Um, and again, you're going to see this is kind of broken up into two different areas up at the top. We have a, a screen, a slideshow here that I'm going to walk you through here in just a second. And at the bottom, you're going to see some tabs and some text um, just to kind of give a quick overview of when you go into a project and you're trying to decide if this is something that you want to teach. We've got the introduction. You're going to see the different products that are associated with this project. And you'll also notice that each one of those projects was listed with the name of a career. All of our things are all of our projects are, are done through the lens of a career. I know when I was a math teacher, one of the number one questions was, when am I ever going to use this? This takes eliminates that question from the conversation because it's shown right from the lens of a career of how this math is going to be used. So in this case, you're going to see it has three different products and each one of these products has its own custom rubric assessing that particular product. So you can see all of the different math content that's in there, as well as other different um, areas that we're going to assess with that product. You'll see we've got check-in questions along the way, and you'll see those when I go through the slideshow that you can have students answer right within the platform or use however you'd like, whether it's bell work, entrance or exit slips, group discussion. We've got those embedded in there, however you want to use those. A whole section of teaching resources that are there for the teachers, as well as a section for student resources as well, that if you assign this out to students, that will show up there for them. Like we mentioned earlier, this is standards based too. I'm based in the Denver, Colorado area. So I'm looking at Colorado and you'll see all of my state standards there for Colorado for grade six math. We have other standard sets too that we're happy to turn on for you if there's other things that you'd like to look at. And then finally for middle school and high school, students are doing something right there in Define Learning. And they're like, that was a really cool project. I really liked what I was learning. And I wanna explore that career a little bit more. It's directly connected to Define Career. So we've got other careers that they can explore on our other platform too, which is also project-based. Everything I just showed you, you'll notice this button up here. I'm not gonna go through it in the interest of time, but it is all customizable. So you can customize that as well. So let's do a quick look here at the project in the slideshow too. So each one of these, like I said, you can assign it out to a, a, a student or a class. You're also able to use this within your classrooms as well. Uh, we're always trying to make things very realistic for students and providing everything with an introduction there directly related to that career. We're always making connections to the real world. You'll see we have check-in questions embedded all throughout the way here for, for students. Like I said, feel free to use it however you would like. Everyone is, every one of these projects is going to have a goal, role, audience, and situation. Again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to show that, but we want to make things that make sure that these are always an authentic situation to make things really real um, for students as well. Then we really want students to begin their research. So here we're going to start to do something along with that topic, which is sampling, as well as looking at those target audiences. Again, a direct relation for the unit that we're in. Always helping students out with helpful vocabulary that's going to help them with not only their math, but sometimes also the career that they're studying as well. And additional, we have some research resources as well. That's just a kind of a way to help students get started. Again, if you want to customize this and put something local in there as well, you're always free to do so. 
And finally, those three products that I showed you at the bottom, we have the text there so you can read it. We've got them embedded in the, the presentation as well. So here you can take a look. We've got the research study survey. We've got the graph. We've got the oral presentation. More information on all three of these. We've got the graph and the oral presentation. Do you need to have do all three of these? Absolutely not. This is all customizable. You can choose which products you wanna have students do. Maybe you have everybody doing one of them and, and uh, they get to choose another one. It's kind of up to you on how you do that. Or you can just only have everybody doing the exact same one or you can break students up into teams to lots of different options. Helping students with the design process. Um, and then finally kind of moving into the next steps which is actually creating that, pro that those product or products depending on how you roll that out. So that is really kind of a quick look into what our projects are. Now within the platform, we also mentioned one of the things that you could do was put in a custom plan. So I wanna show you that as well and what that looks like within a, uh, a student account as well. So Andy showed you kind of a screenshot of our defined portrait of a graduate. And you may have, like I said, one for your school or district as well. This is something that we can actually take and put right into Define Learning or Define Careers. You'll see those um, eight different areas that, that were on that uh, image that Andy showed. We've got those here as well. Each one of these is expandable. You can take a look and add those different sections and maybe uh, statements that are descriptive of that particular um, you know, item within your portrait of a graduate. Students can go in then and self-reflect on where they are. My started, in progress, completed. Um, and this is kind of a nice way to kind of see and let students actually reflect on where they are, as well as, and I'm going to get to, you'll see in a little bit, providing evidence. And we're going to come back to that as well. And that's something that Define Learning and Define Careers can really help with in terms of developing those skills and providing evidence of that. So in addition to that custom plan, which was that first key component that I mentioned, the second key component that I mentioned was the custom catalog. So you've seen we already have close to a thousand projects and maybe you wanna have that customized implementation of which projects are we gonna do within our district. You'll see right here on my dashboard, we've created just a custom catalog. This is the defined school district. So you can imagine your own school district's catalog right here. You can go right into this. And this is kind of a more simplistic way of rolling this out, but we've got you know our own custom, we put your own logo in there, your own name. We're rolling this out just in three different grade levels right here, but you can see sixth, seventh, and eighth grade projects. If I go into this, you'll see I'm breaking this out in terms of first and second semester. For, for this sample implementation, we're looking at three different subject areas where we want to put this, math, social studies, and science, and same thing for second semester. And then if we go into one of these, it's set up just like what you saw with that sixth grade math, where we've got those unit outlines here. That same project that I just walked you through, the research consultant, here where we've customized the title, we're really focusing on critical thinking in this particular um, project. So everything you're gonna see here, <coughs> excuse me, is the exact same, except for we have customized this rubric. Same topics that we were measuring before, but in addition to all of those different areas, we're gonna take a look and allow those educators to also assess students on those competencies. So like I said earlier, the project-based learning nature really lends itself nicely to being able to measure all of those things. So that's where you're gonna be able to get the data, see where students are based on those particular competencies. So with that, that is a lot of where we're at in terms of you know what defined learning is as a whole and how that customized implementation might look in terms of creating that custom catalog, getting that custom plan um, in, in the, in the uh, actual platform for you um, in terms of some of those key components that we were talking about with defined goals. So I think with that, we had another check-in question here. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, yes, uh, Lisa. So thank you for all that great information that you shared, um, all, all the different content, but, um, what are some practical ways to implement and does it actually matter what subjects are utilized to measure portrait of graduate competencies? So that's a great question and one probably one of the most common ones with defined goals. So the key word I would kind of emphasize here is flexibility. Defined goals is extremely flexible. You're able to, districts are able to really implement as narrowly or as broadly 
as they would wish. You know, for example, we just took a look at kind of only looking at the middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. We had three grade levels. We were looking at three competencies and we looked at three core subjects, math, science, and social studies. But you could also take a look and in, you know, if you're looking at this from a district level, making this a K-12 implementation, uh, looking at even electives. We have an entire computer science and STEM catalog that you can put it in with Define Careers. It's a perfect fit for within CTE courses or any sort of college and career readiness courses and as many competencies as you would like. So it can be, like I said, as narrow or as broad as, as a, a district would really like, um, very flexible. Um, I would also mention that we have a whole team of experts at the ready to really sit down and be uh, you know, your, your, your team there in terms of consultation, whether you're, you're old pros at a portrait of a graduate and you're just looking for a way to measure, we're happy to sit down with you and pick what whatever different projects are that are going to be a best fit. Maybe you're new to this and you're really starting to think through, this looks great. We don't even have a portrait or profile of a graduate, but we do want to measure some competencies. We can help you get there. So a lot of different ways in terms of how you can take a look at implementing this within your district with whatever grade levels you want, whatever subjects you want, um, and with whatever competencies you would like as well. Thanks, Lisa. So it sounds like there's there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, you know, for, for example, I know we, we, we've spoken with folks who, even though they had multiple uh, competencies uh, that the, they, they chose, you know, we're going to start this in math, for example, or, you know, we're going to start this in, in, in social studies. We're going to start this in science. And it could be either a coalition of the willing or where it just makes sense for a district to start if you only want to start in, in one subject. Is, do I have that correct? Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. Um, so then uh, moving on to to the, the the next question, and and we also have some questions coming in from from the audience. We'll we'll make sure we ad address those shortly as well. Um, but obviously, the, a big part of this, and 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 part of what we talked about at the beginning, and whether it was you know Thompson School District in Colorado or all the others that that we've spoken with, obviously we, we there there's great interest in being able to share data on with with the students themselves, of course, parents, board members, community members. How are we progressing uh, towards our portrait of a graduate competencies? And so how does that work from a reporting standpoint? That is another great question. So I'm going to hop back into the platform here so that you can see what the reporting looks like live here. So again, for anybody who has the permissions and we want to allow that, that reporting for uh, we have a reporting dashboard right in um, Define Learning and Define Careers, where they're going to be able to look at both of those both of those things that I you know shared, whether we were you know aligning and creating those those new rubrics with those those tags, as well as um, you know looking at that portrait or profile of a graduate and the completion of those different indicators here. I'm actually going to start with the performance indicators report first here. Um, you're going to be able to really drill down and hone in on whatever. Uh, tags and whatever, you can see all of the different things here, schools, grade levels, teachers, classes, whichever school year you want. Um, just in the interest of time and simplicity here, you know, we looked at the critical thinking one for math. Um, so let's just go with critical thinkers for this example. I'm going to just say all schools. I'm going to go with the teacher that I, I just was, which I was in my Colorado demo account. And we're going to go ahead and generate that report. So right here, we can dig in and see live where our district is or where our school or whichever teacher it is, um, with the progress with not only, you know, of where those students are with those particular with that particular um, indicator. Now we have a lot of different ways to, to roll it out. Sometimes we have customers who want to do a project every month. Some like to do one every quarter. You know, you saw in our example, we did one every semester. So I'm just going to show you right here, this aggregation period here is like, if you wanted to see if you had everybody doing something every month, we can also break it down into quarters and kind of see where that, where we are with that. Maybe you're just going to do um, every semester or something like that. You can see right here, kind of, again, going back to that rubric that we showed there where we added in critical thinkers there that as students were completing their products, submitting them to their educators, all the educator had to do was grade that rubric. And now you're getting this data back from all of the different uh, projects that were submitted. And here you can see the students are, are growing with those critical thinking skills from the first second to the second semester. Down below, 
you're going to be able to drill in a little bit more, looking at the actual students, looking at the actual products that were submitted, you know, when they were lots of just um, data in terms of, of where that data is coming from and being able to hone in on that. So that was just very, you know, kind of quick, but being able to look at those performance indicators and see where they were. Now, if you do have a custom plan in there, you had your portrait of a graduate. I'm going to look at our defined one. Again, looking at the teachers as well, we're going to use just that same one that I was showing earlier. You can actually see the progress in terms of where they are with completing that plan. So again, going to be some, some of the same things there in terms of the performance indicators, but you can see how many students have, are not started, how many are started, and how many have completed the whole plan bringing it down into all of those different areas. So again, critical thinking was the example that I showed today. You can break it down and kind of hover over that. Then you can also break it down into a, um, a specific statement within that particular plan. So again, if I go into, these are all of our areas and all of those different statements and metrics that were below each section. Critical thinking is again, the one that we were looking at today. We're gonna go into that very first one here. And you can drill into that too and see the full data of that particular statement within your own custom plan, your portrait or profile of a graduate, and that status of where students are. Here you'll see the evidence. We had those two products that were part of that custom catalog that students had, had done and submitted, and now we are able to report. You'll also see the button up here. You can download that as a CSV, so you have all of that right at your fingertips to run reports as, as you wish and see the progress with those you know, those particular performance indicators, as well as the progress with all of that, the, the plans as well. So that's really what the, the data and the reporting are going to look like here um, for defined goals. And I know we're running short on time here, so we've got looks like three minutes left. I'm going to put this back up here, and then perhaps we can, I think there's been a few questions that have come in as well. I don't know, Andy, what you think here for, for our next steps here to wrap up. Sure. So I, I've answered a couple of the questions directly, Lisa, but one I haven't gotten to yet was um, from Roman Stearns. And the question was, for many districts, an outcome like critical thinking is broken into component parts, i.e. inquiry, reasoning, et cetera. Is there flexibility to customize and incorporate multiple components into a project? Trying to, I believe the answer is yes. Let me read this one more time here. It was coming, it's coming in pretty fast here. Uh, it's broken into components. Um, absolutely. Yeah. We, the, the, you know, the rubric that I showed, we just had critical thinking as is the only thing there. We can put whatever whatever works best. You know, like I said, the key to for defined goals is really to think about flexibility. Yes, if you have different um, components that you want to put in there, if you want to add multiple more rows, we can add as many as you would like. You know, for critical thinking, we actually had four different statements under that bullet there. You know, we if you wanted to make even more specific statements, breaking down that critical thinking component. Absolutely. That would that would be something that our, you know, you would work with our team on and we would actually, you know, put that right into the rubric and that would be part of your custom catalog. Yeah, so great I'll just, I just it is a great question, Roman. And, and, and just just, you know, add to that, um, you know, that the, when the part of that process and, and um, it, we have the slide up here, but that, you know, selecting the customized projects, um, you would incorporate your attributes, uh, not ours, uh, your look for us. We're our team of experts is there to help, but you may have already gone through and, and actually designed those those in, those exact look fors or indicators associated with a, with a specific competency. And our team will bring that to life in, in a rubric. So the answer is absolutely yes. Um, and, it's, and it's, of course, 100 uh, percent customizable. The, the defined goals portrait of graduate is just an example, something that we've had our own for many, many years. But we are definitely looking at uh, customizing around your specific uh, attributes uh, and look for us. So hopefully that helps. Uh, and oh, another question real quick, uh, and we can address this quick and quickly. Um, Amanda Waldo, is there a student level dashboard? Yes, at, there there is. So the students will actually be able to see their uh, there, uh, there, there's an actual a student portfolio with all kinds of information, their evidence, um, but and, and part of that is going to be their ability to uh, publish and share uh, their own inf their their own information, their entire portfolio, as a matter of fact. So, um, hopefully that helps answer that question, Amanda. Uh, and uh, Lisa's actually bringing up a, a quick example of what that what that looks like. Um, our fictitious student uh, Jordan, Colorado.
Yeah, right here is a great example of the portfolio. You can see all of the defined learning learning projects right in there. If they also are using defined careers, those are in there. They're able to upload any personal projects as well. Um, you know, and then to kind of go back to um, what we had with uh, the, we've got a the if they were doing their oops, I meant to hit the the plants. My mouse is kind of acting up here. If you wanted to do uh, just a quick progress report of their their plans as well, we've got that. And then the last thing I'll show you because I know it kind of comes up quite a bit too in terms of looking at you know the projects or looking at things in terms of their. Um, all of the things that they've done, it's kind of nice to look at the career cluster wheel as well. It's a nice summary of all of the different career experiences they've they've um, they've had across both defined learning and defined careers. So lots of different ways to look at individual student data. Thanks, Lisa, and I, and I and I again greatly appreciate the audience in attendance today. Um, and just to wrap up, I'll really quickly uh, uh, you know summarize this. But yes, um, you know part of that the, the your specific plans. You'll be working with with our team our, our team to actually select and customize those projects that are going to you know specifically measure your your competencies. There is going to be a, a specific tile, um, so it's really easy for you know that you may be using projects every day, but there'll be specific tile for your for your teachers to go right in. They'll know exactly what project to use to measure I, measure that specific. Uh, um, characteristic. We looked at critical thinking, for example, could be any of them, ad adaptability, problem solving, whatever those, those attributes are. Um, we're going to also, along the way, our team will be helping your teachers grading the rubrics, uh, professional learning, uh, 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 you know, for working through this process. And of course, as Lisa mentioned, the data analysis. And that that is multiple levels. We're talking about an administrative view, uh, a view that you can share at, at the classroom level, the teacher level, um, also, of course, uh, information at the district level. And looking at that over specific periods of time, you can track this K through 12. Um, you can, of course, look at interrupt steps uh, along the way. So that's a real, just a real quick summary of that. And of course, we have the QR code. Um, you know, visit us at, at definelearning.com uh, to, to, to find out more information. Um, again, just really appreciate everyone to be uh, being in attendance today. Everyone here will, of course, receive uh, a copy of this, uh, this webinar. Um, you'll also, along with that, receive a special invitation to our March 18th summit on uh, driving student success with career connected learning you'll hear from superintendents from across the country from 11 to 4 uh, eastern time that day um so you'll, you'll get an invitation for that as well but we definitely encourage you to scan the qr code visit us you can sign up for a, a demo or, or have a conversation with us to talk more about define goals specifically or, or or anything else that you'd like to talk about from the define ecosystem so anyway on behalf of define learning again i want to thank you for joining us today i hope you found our webinar to be informative um, so so long everyone have a fantastic day and please don't hesitate to reach out to us with any additional questions thanks so much thank you